So, next we see what is a tap controller. So, tap controller uh, it is basically controlling all other modules say uh, in the boundary scan and you see that okay, uh, it, it has got a number of states. So, there are 16 states in this uh, tap controller. So, it works on this uh, test clock TCK and this TMS okay, and it outputs 9 or 10 signals included in clock DR, update DR, shift DR. So, all this uh, all these signal values will be updated as it passes through the states. So, this is basically the uh, state transition diagram of this uh, tap controller. So, we will try to understand a part of it. So, this test logic reset, so when this test logic reset is uh, placed, so this whole thing gets reset and it comes to the state 1, okay, it, 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 it comes to the state test logic reset. Now, you see that whenever it is um, whenever this is uh, equal, whenever this is uh, more uh, this uh, the test logic reset whenever this particular uh, PT, uh, pin is pressed so this will be coming to this similarly uh, when this this is basically that after that this test mode signal uh, if it is 0 so it will come to this uh, test run test idle cycle and it will remain for the for the, uh, in this state as long as this tms input is 0 and, and from this run or test idle so, if this so if the TMS input is 1, so it comes to this particular state. So, it select data register scan, then it goes to if it now no, these transitions are on on the TMS line. So, if TMS line if it is 0, then it will go to the capture data register, then if it is 0, then it will again go to shift data register as long as it is 0. So, it is really remaining in the shifting mode and then in 1, so it is exiting the data register, so exiting this. Uh, this actually the shifting operation is exited. Now, there can be a pause. So, you can put this uh, 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 TMS value at 0. So, at as long as this is 0, so it will remain in the pause mode. Now, if it is 1, then it comes to another state where exit to DR. So, basically this is uh, uh, this is basically the updation of the updation of the input from the uh, uh, from the circuit. So, for the exit 1 pause and this exit 2. So, they are actually taking, uh, they are actually doing the uh, um, that launching mode or the, the pattern is getting applied to the uh, circuit. And then after that again they are, if, if, the, if it is 0, then again it will go to the next shift, shift DR, so that the next pattern will be shifted in. So, this way uh, this part is responsible for doing the shifting of test pattern, applying the test pattern etcetera. Now, whenever if you give a 1 signal TMS equal to 1, that means we want to update the other register R2. So, this update data register takes place on this. So, if it is uh, 1, if it is 1, then it and uh, if it is uh, if it is 1, it goes to uh, this state, the se again select the data register scan and all that. If it is 0, then it goes to the idle as if this uh, no more testing has to be done. So, it has it will remain idle. Again, the, if the TMS is 1, so it will again go into the data register scan mode. Uh, now, in the select data register scan mode, so if you uh, give this input as 1, then it will go to the instruction register update. Basically, I in this part, it was uh, shifting in the uh, test pattern, getting the responses, uh, updating the boundary scan, boundary scan cells and all that. So, that was taking part here. So, this is basically the data register updation. And sometimes, we need to update the other part, the instruction register update and all that. So, that is uh, done by putting two TMS, uh, TMS high for two successive cycles. So, TMS is high for two successive cycles from, from the run test idle mode, it will come to this uh, uh, instruction register mode. So, it is select IR scan, so it will select the uh, uh, instruction register, then if it is 1, so it will go back to the uh, uh, test logic reset state. If it is 0, it will capture the instruction register. So, it the whatever value is coming on the TDI line. So, that will be captured into this uh, instruction register. Then this shift IR, so this will the successive bits will be of the TDI, so they will be shifted here. Then we have got exit 1 IR, so exit pause. So, this is actually for applying the instruction that we have got here. So, we want to decode it, so that decoding is done uh, at the, uh, the decoding time is given here. Then there is update instruction register mode, so where it will be doing the updation. So, a, a full description of this will be available in 1149 uh, uh, manual, but these are actually this shows that this TAP controller it goes via a number of states and by controlling this TMS signal, we can control the 
uh, transition of this uh, of this uh, TAP controller so that it can make the either the test pattern to pass into the boundary scan register cells or it can uh, it can update the ins internal registers okay for uh, various other things okay so other 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 control related uh, instructions that needs to be updated so that can be taken into the uh, instruction register and other registers so these are the um, uh, these are the major functions that are provided by the tap controller the, the resetting the boundary scan circuitry then uh, load instructions into instruction register perform test capture operation, perform test update operation and shift test data in and out. So, these are the major functions to be provided by the tap controller. So, how, so these are the various states that we have listed previously. So, test logic reset, so that is the normal mode. So, the basically the tap controller will remain in this mode in most of the time. So, there is no function of the boundary scan cell uh, register, no testing is going on. So, no, no data needs to be transferred to, to the boundary scan registers. Then this run test idle, so wait for internal test such as BIST. So, run test idle means the test has been initiated and now when the test will be over, the, uh, then it should be informed. So, that way it waits for the internal test to be over such as BIST. Then this select DR scan, so it initiate a data scan sequence. So, in this uh, DR scan, so, so you see the run test idle is, uh, it is some internal test is going on. Then this select DR scan means it is some data register scan operation is going to start. So, that is the select DR scan. Then the captured DR load test data in parallel. So, this captured DR is uh, coming from, uh, this is, this, so captured DR mode. So, this, if this bit TMS bit is 0, so it is coming to captured DR. So, this is coming from the uh, from that uh, circuit as the capture input. So, from the uh, in line that we have, so that will be put into the DR register. So, that is the, the into the R1 register. So, that is load test data in parallel. Then the shift DR, so it, it is the from the TDI line or the serial input line. So, if we are trying to load the data, so then the shift DR uh, state will come uh, load data in series then exit 1 DR, so it finish phase 1 shifting of data. So, first phase of shifting data is over. Now, uh, there, there is uh, some other operation has to be done because the maybe the test pattern will be applied and the response will be captured things like that. So, we need to store the wait for some time. So, that is basically the pause DR operation. So, temporarily hold the scan of operation. So, uh, for example, allow the bus master to reload data. Bus master will reload data means the pattern will be applied to the circuit and the response will be uh, available on the bus. So, that way it will be there. Then this exit to DR, so it finish phase 2 shifting of data. So, here actually the response will be of current pattern will be going out and then it, that is the phase exit 2. And there is update DR, so parallel load from associated uh, shift registers. So, this is this update DR, so this is basically from the shift register, the parallelly the values will be updated. So, control, so controls for IR are similar to those for DR. So, you as, as I was uh, showing you that, okay, so this entire operation is divided into two segments. In one segment, we are updating the data register, doing some operation of the data register. Another part, we are updating the uh, instruction, the control instruction register and the related uh, operations. So, they are uh, going to be similar, the, the, the philosophy of operation is similar, only in one case the boundary scan register uh, that gets updated and in another case this instruction register and uh, other related places they get updated. Now, what are the instructions that this step controller can support? First instruction is a bypass operation. So, it bypass data through a chip. So, this is a bypass operation. Then there is a sample operation, so that will sample or capture the test data into the boundary scan register. Then there is a preload, so shift in test data and update the boundary scan register. Then there is an X test mode, where the test interconnection between uh, chips of a board, so that they will be tested. And there is an optional in test run based clamp I, ID code, uh, ID code, then user code, hi Z. So these are some optional instructions, but these are the four basic instructions that are to be supported for a board level testing. 
So, bypass this is required because you can bypass a chip you know, if the next instruction is not meaningful, instruction or data is not meaningful for this particular chip. So, you can bypass it putting it into bypass mode. So, sample mode. So, this is basically uh, to uh, get the uh, uh, basically getting the test data, the captured data into the boundary scan register. Then preload uh, basically shifting the shifting in the test data. So, that is there and X test is basically for testing interconnect between the board. So, there is a difference between testing a chip and testing an interconnect. So, testing a chip means uh, there we are willing to apply the particular uh, um, pattern to the uh, inputs of the chip, but when we are trying to test the interconnect. So, output of one chip connects to the input of another chip. So, as a result the test pattern actually goes to the output of the chip and it is captured at the input of the second chip, which is uh, uh, counter of what we do for chip testing, where the input is applied to the input of the chip and output is collected from the output pin of the chip. So, it is so that is why it is called an X test mode. Okay. So, naturally there has to be something called an in test mode, where the uh, pattern the um, pattern is applied to the chip for testing. So, that is uh, what it, it, it may not be there like uh, this, uh, this uh, capture mode automatically may take care of that run beast. So, if the chip is beast fitted, then this run beast mode is useful. Then clamp. So, it will take the value at a particular point. So, we will see them. So, how this bypass instruction is executed? So, in the bypass instruction mode, so the instruction register uh, gets that bypass instruction and then this tap controller will uh, select this uh, uh, multiplexer in such a fashion that whatever is coming in TDI is going to the TDO and this bypass register is a 1 bit register. So, it will introduce a delay of only 1 unit through the chip. So, instead of having a delay of equal to all these uh, uh, sum of all these boundary scan cells. So, it will have a delay of only 1 bit to get the input transferred from TDI to the TDO line. Okay. So, that is the bypass instruction. Then the sample instruction. So, sample instruction. So, what is happening? first this uh, the input line which is uh, which is the functional input. So, that is uh, uh, going to uh, this multiplexer and then this uh, then this uh, uh, this uh, this is also coming to this uh, R 1 register. Now, this multiplexer through this multiplexer it is uh, selecting the uh, it is applied to the internal logic. So, this R 2 is not connected to this, uh, this is multiplexer is programmed in such a fashion that this input goes to the internal logic. So, uh, the result is available at this point. Now, this result is coming to the uh, um, uh, this multiplexer are available at the output. At the same time, this result is also available at the R, R 1 line here, the R 1 register of this cell. So, you see that the input has been captured here and this output has been captured at this point. So, that is the sample operation. So, by application of a particular input what happens to the uh, output. So, that is captured in the R 1 line R 1 register. Then there is a preload instruction. So, in a preload instruction uh, this uh, whatever is coming through this TDI line. So, that is uh, loaded into this register and that is also loaded into this R 1 register but the functional input is uh, functional part goes unaltered like this internal input. So, it is uh, loading it loaded in through this multiplexer, the multiplexer is selecting this input line. So, the it operates functionally that is the internal logic the or the logic part of the circuit. So, it operates uh, in its normal mode, but this uh, uh, through this uh, TDI line we can preload some pattern onto this uh, boundary scan cells. Okay. So, this and this R 1 R 2 registers. So, we can preload some pattern. So, that is the preload instruction. And then this uh, X test instruction. So, what is done first? So, X test I have said that it will be testing the uh, um, interconnect between the chips like we are interested to check say this particular interconnect. Then how can we test this thing? First of all, this test data input that we want to apply at this point, maybe we want to check whether this line is uh, stuck at 1 or not. So, we have to send a 0 onto this line. So, that 0 bit is shifted through this TDI line like this. So, there is the, the, the chip 1, it operates in the 
shift data register mode and chip 2 does not have to do anything. So, it is not yet working in the test mode. So, it is working in the normal mode. So, this bit through a number of shifting. So, it comes to this point. Then in the second step this chip 1 is put into update DR mode. So, in the up if we put into the update DR mode then you know that when this uh, shifting was going on when this shifting was going on. So, it was only affecting the R 1 register. So, this R 1 register was only getting affected. So, it was not available on the R 2 register. So, this was uh, uh, so at the output side. So, the it was not available on the R 2. So, it was only available at R 1 during the shift operation. So, the update uh, DR operation this the value is available at R 2 as a result the value is available onto this particular pin. Now, this pin being uh, so now this uh, circuit. So, this is mode put in capture DR mode. So, from the uh, input it is uh, from the um, uh, from this input. So, it is getting captured onto this cell. Okay. So, the, this cells uh, R 1 it has got this value now. Now, this has to be transported to this output. So, how that is done? So, that is done uh, in this fashion. Now, this chip 2 is put into shift DR mode. So, this R 1, so up through this R 1 line, it the all the, uh, the this R 1 uh, inputs uh, R 1 register values they get shifted into uh, through this uh, registers and they come to this TDO. So, all these uh, are done by the R 1 line. So, that way we can give get it onto the uh, that uh, serial out line of the um, boundaries cancel that is coming here and that is finally connected to the test data output for the entire chip. Okay. So, that way this is a in the three steps. So, this can be done this x test execution first the ch chip is uh, this first chip is put in the shift mode then the first chip is put in the, um, the um, update mode and the second chip in the capture mode and in the third phase the second chip is put into the shift mode to finally get the uh, shifted value at the output. Now, the in test instruction. So, now here what is happening is that some test pattern that is coming through this TDI line that needs to be applied to the circuit. So, first it is uh, this tap controller will uh, put the, uh, the shift D it will put it in the shift DR state. So, this shift DR uh, uh, mode. So, the, this test data that is coming through the TDI line. So, they get shifted into this uh, R 1 registers you know, of this reg of, of the boundary scan cells. And after that it goes into the update data register mode. So, we it is assumed that uh, this particular operation it requires a certain uh, uh, pattern to be applied only at uh, on this line okay. on only on this bit I need to put some special value rest of the bits for the internal logic they are assumed to already have assumed uh, some values only another bit has to be sent Maybe they are they those values were obtained from uh, say uh, by the normal operation that uh, so, by so, normal operation the bits got transferred there and all that only this uh, through sample operation and only uh, via one, only one bit we need to transfer that one bit transfer is taking place. So, this shift uh, shift operation that bit comes to the R 1 register of this particular cell okay. R 1 register of uh, say this cell and after that by update DR this R 1 value goes to R 2 value and R 2 register and the R 2 registers content is available at the out pin. So, this outline uh, outline is now fed to the is fed to the internal logic. So, all this value is available here. So, this update DR. Uh, so, this um, test pattern can be applied onto this internal logic now. After that there has to be capture. So, this value uh, whatever uh, has been applied to this internal logic. So, that produces some output. Suppose, uh, it has modified uh, uh, several bits, but we are interested to get the value that is captured onto this register alone. So, that way again so the in the it goes in the capture data register mode. So, that way this value will be available onto the R 1 register of uh, this cell and again there will be a shifting. So, shifting will be uh, going of the, the, the all these R 1 registers. So, they are put onto this chain and through this shifting operation it finally goes to the test data output pin of the chip. Okay. So, this way I can uh, for testing for in test where the pattern that I apply has to go through this logic. So, first the bit is uh, set here they by shift operation then an by an update operation. So, it is uh, put on to R 2 here then this is uh, then this circuit operates after that it uh, uh, goes into a capture DR where the response of this logic is captured by the at the output cell 
R1 register and then at the uh, next point the, uh, the value will be shifted out through a number of cycles into the through this TDO line uh, through this R1 register uh, forming that SISO that uh, uh, serial shifting through it will come to the TDO pin of the chip. So, this way the in test instruction is taking place. So, then next we will look into this boundary scan description language or BSDL. So, this is uh, a part of uh, 1149.1, uh, there are several purposes of it, it provides standard description language for this boundary scan devices, simplifies the design work of boundary scan automated synthesis is possible. So, basically there is a language then uh, the, um, design, the boundary scan designers and this uh, um, test uh, the, the chip designer who, who are designing their chips to be compatible with boundary scan, so that becomes easier. So, consistency in the ASIC design phase, uh, manufacturing phase, foundry and the stage developer, AT manufacturer, so all of them they can be unified. It makes it easy to incorporate a boundary scan into software tools for test generation, analysis, failure diagnosis, etcetera and it reduces the possibility of human error when employing boundary scan in a design. So, this is a part of 1149.1, it was it has been introduced in 2001, the boundary scan description language. What are the features? It describes the testability features of boundary scan devices that are compatible with 1149.1. So, it does not try to augment that particular standard, but it on only provides uh, a description uh, um, policy for the uh, um, uh, for the boundary scan device. Okay, so, this uh, this, is, this is a subset of S subset of VHDL. So, S subset is the synthesizable subset, okay. VHDL synthesizable subset has been used for describing it. System logic and 1149.1 elements that are absolutely mandatory did not be specified. So, bypass register, tap controller, so they are uh, always there. So, they are the mandatory part. So, they need not be specified, only the remaining things are to be specified like whether the TRST mode is there, reset mode is there, how many internal registers are there. So, those things are to be specified. So, uh, like uh, the basic things are not, uh, not to be specified and there are some commercial tools that have come up for this uh, uh, for synthesizing in the, uh, the boundary, sc uh, boundary scan description language that we have. So, if you have some description in that language, the commercial tools are there which can do the synthesis part. So, this is the overall structure, the BIST support scan and BIST support with boundary scans. Like what can happen? So, uh, 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 this is the entire chip. So, this is the logic that we have. Now, this logic may be tested uh, via some external uh, input or it may be tested via some BIST. Okay. So, what is done? is that this tap controller, so this test access, pro, so if you are trying to send uh, some uh, input uh, uh, serially to the scan chain, so through this TDI line you can feed the input uh, into the scan chain and similarly the scan outline, so that can be connected uh, to the TDO uh, test data output point through this multiplexer. So, this tap controller can do this, that serial shifting through this uh, scan path. Uh, um, pattern may be applied, response may be captured and all that. So, that may be done. Second thing is that it can, uh, there may be some beast. So, this tap controller can be uh, informing the beast decoder like what to do. Okay. okay. So, they, that way this beast decoder will in turn tell the beast controller like whether it should uh, do the operation, if there is a reset signal, clock signal, hold signal. So, they are given to the beast controller then this memory and register file. So, they are normally tested by BIST. So, here the logic may also be tested by BIST, but the logic part of the circuit, but it is normally not done because uh, of the reason that logic part is uh, um, I should say more heterogeneous across different designs. So, their uh, test patterns will be different, but when you are talking about memory and register files, so they are more regular in nature. So, possibly we can uh, we can just uh, take help of uh, some regular uh, test patterns for do, uh, doing this uh, re memory register file updation so and they are testing so the beast controller can be are normally used for this part and naturally there has to be some compressor which will compress all these responses and then it will be uh, uh, it will be selecting uh, the beast signature output so the serial output so that can be given out of tdo now 
they are so this tap control this uh, boundary scan it will have the instruction register as well so instruction register it will go to the decoder so decoder will tell whether it is a beast instruction it is an internal scan so if it is an internal scan the uh, i the decoder of this uh, tap controller so this will tell that it will inform the scan decoder and it will tell how to uh, input the scan it goes uh, it, it gives scan enable signal to the scan path so what sort of uh, operations are to be done so that is uh, told by the scan decoder so rest of the things are not shown there may be some more control lines needed for controlling the scan path but that is not shown here similarly we have this thing this uh, beast operation so if it is a beast operation then this beast decoder will be informed and accordingly the beast decoder will be controlling the beast session so this way we can have this uh, boundary scan which can support this uh, scan and uh, beast operations in the entire operation sometimes we can have bus master for chips with boundary scan so we can have this type of structure so ring architecture with shared test mode signal so here what is happening is that so these are some chips 1 2 3 these are different chips and you see the test mode signal that is here so it is common to all the three chips and the tdi line the test data input line is uh, going to the first chip and this tdo of first chip is going to the tdi of second and that way tdo of second will go to the tdi tdi of uh, third that way it goes so this actually forming some sort of a ring structure all these chips as if they are put on a ring something like a daisy chain so if the first uh, though the test mode signal is given to all of them this test data input and test data output so they are actually chained like this so the that since the test mode signal is common to all the chips so all of them will be doing the same operation all of them will be doing the same operation but this uh, test data input lines uh, they, they they are serially connected so you you can put uh, different uh, uh, values onto the onto this uh, data registers uh, so the so that they can be operating on different test data but the test mode line being same their transitions of the tap controller will be same so all of them will be going into the same set of transitions so this way we can configure these um, chips onto different modes and uh, these uh, different architectures can be made out of this uh, boundary scan we'll continue in the next class